Ran out of film on the last one, but that's all right. We're just going to pick off. And like I said, this requires a lot of tool switching. Now, normally, um, real quick, like, I have two of these type of die grinders. One of them is being rebuilt right now, so I'm down to one, which means I could uh, have two grinders with two different bits on it. But since I don't have that, I got to do switching back and forth. It takes not long, but it's just the point of saving time. These are the three burrs right here. Let me zoom in on you, give you a close up. We got three wicked animals right here we're going to use. There's actually a fourth one, but it don't come through to the very end. The finger, which does the real finesse, you know, finesse blending. We'll use this first. Then this. Then back to this. Then this. And we should come out. I'm going to show you step by step how I do it and how I set it up so y'all can get a good idea. All right, so let's start with bobtailing the guide and increasing the cross-sectional area. I mean, man, if you just look at it, you can see all the room that you're gaining in comparison. It's um, not just that. It's a wet flow thing, too. It's a lot of different things, but let's go on in there and get this done. Oh, by the way, I guess it becomes apparent now why I took the drill and chopped that guide and brought it level with aluminum. Once again, it gave me a marking point, uh, an, an instant center or a standard to where I can get all of them the same or get them reasonably close. It's all through porting the head you have to do that. Okay, so anyway, let's get on with the procedure. Okay, first thing I want to start with is the big aluminum cutter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to round the top and try to begin to form the nose till we get to the cast iron guide. <laughs> Okay, now at that point right there, what we've done is we got the bulk of the aluminum away, but now we're starting to get onto the iron, and these cutters do not like to be beat on iron. It will dull them very fast. So we're going to switch to a large egg for cutting metal. Only problem is it loads up extremely quick, so you have to keep dipping it because the, the cutter blades are so close spaced that what it does, it'll start collecting the aluminum. Let's get us a dip here. About all you can do because it, it, it's going to load up, there's no getting around it. Now, see how I'm doing? I just keep rounding and rounding. But now, what I got going on is look at the hump difference. Let me try to move that light a little bit. Look at the hump difference 
okay, back here in the back. You see, if you try to follow the guide, but you got to be careful because you cannot lose support. But it's just too thick. We need to do some chopping and pull it in. So now we're gonna, what we're going to do is switch back to the big hog master cutter. Okay. Now we're here. Let's see what we can do now. I start back there on the back side. And once again, like I mentioned earlier, the reflection of the light is actually helping me because it's going to have a reflection the same as the port next to it. bulk of it down. Now we're going to switch from this cutter right here. We're going to go over to the uh, to the smaller cutter because we got to get up on the sides of the wall and try to pull this in. All right, here we go. Very slow cut, uh, cutter speed. And then you're kind of dancing as it rolls off of it. And then look what we got now. Notice that we still got plenty of back support. We didn't take the aluminum away from there. The radius is the support like uh, the crank pin on a crankshaft has a fillet radius and you have to use them H bearings in it. Same theory applying here. We got plenty of fillet holding it in place. Now let's do a shot showing both guides. Notice how the light on both sides holds similar reflections. Okay. What I'm referring to is there's a shadow, there's a shadow, there's a shadow, there's a shadow. Um, now I can move this light a little bit. That's the other thing you got to watch because it's hard to get it exactly centered. But you can tell the light is actually telling you the shades and the area and the reflection points are going to be the same. That's what I'm referring to. So, are they pretty, pretty similar? Heck yeah, they are. Looks like we're on our way. I'm going to go ahead and round all the guides on the head. And I'm going to go ahead and do the exhaust because that's one thing I try to do. If I'm staring down at an area and i got to do a similar mod, I'll do all the intakes, roll it over, then I'll hit the exhaust and get all the mods. I try to do as many mods with the same cutter as I can before I go to the next cutter. That is a big secret. So, after I get all the guides rounded and get all that blended, the next step is going to be uh, to take and do the, put the bronze guides in and do the three angle valve job. Because now we're going to go from the chamber down, which will be the bowls, the whopping of them, 
setting them, coming out, and blending it. We're on our downside out. Now, we ain't got much more to go, and this project is completed. All right, so back with you later. Okay, what we're doing right here, like I said, while I've got uh, my big aluminum chomper, the Hogmaster here, and grinding it out, I wanted to show you, this is one that's almost finished. It does have some trimming to do, but the point is, what you've got going on here on the exhaust is air exiting. This big block is going to cause a tremendous amount of turbulence. Where if we go in there, round it, and pull that out like I did in this one here, is going to make quite a substantial difference on roof flow. I mean, right there, you can see it. Look how big and bulky that is, and look how streamlined and rolled that is. Since that area is in the roof especially, it's critical. So what I'm going to show you is I'm doing it mainly with this one. I'll go back and touch it with the steel cutters and do some final blending. But I'm going to show you right now how I go in there and pull that shape. Alright, here we go. Let's see what we got. First, I'm going to hit the main body on top. That's done to pull the bulk out of the head. Now let's go on the corners. See how it makes the ends look sharp? Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the bowl and take it down to the first layer of aluminum. All I'm doing with this cutter is barely breaking the edges of the iron. I'll have to go back in there with my iron cutter because the one thing I don't want to do is tear my aluminum cutters up. See that bounce I got on there? That's where I'm trying to get it in the corners. Now, I'm not taking much off at all here. Like I said, I'm just taking a casting flash off. The main area I'm working on is the long body. I'm trying to pull the aluminum down to decrease the size so it ain't got that big bolt to take out of it. And of course, I can't get in the trenches because the cutter's just too big. I'd gouge the port. But if I can get the bulk out of it, It looks a hell of a lot better than what it did before, and you can see the little bit of iron. Now I can manipulate it with the smaller cutters. Let me pull the light away. There you go. That gives you a little bit better view, maybe. Um, but, yeah, when the air is coming out, it hugs back side of the bowl on the upper lifts and hugs that roof, and having a nice streamlined edge to hit and roll off of is going to pick me up anywhere from 10 CFM to as much as 20, depending on the rest of the shape of the port and how much I open it at the mouth. All right, I just wanted to give you that little bitty bit before we went on. I'm just about through with all the guide work on the intake and exhaust before I switch to the iron. The guide work is done, blending and all that, and since I'd already started working on the exhaust, I figured that, uh, once again, keeping in mind that we keep the cutter that we use to the last minute, I figured I'd take old uh, Liable here 
and go ahead and form the trenches. Now what I used on this wasn't the factory exhaust. Um, I talked to my customer today and he told me he had headers, one and five eighths, although that's a little small for this application. He really needs one three quarter. I went with Felpro 1406, which has the famed covered wagon shape. Locked them in and there's our result. Notice how, and it just killed me because I checked the meat, I had the room. I wish it could have been on up here, which, you know, if I was going to make one of these heads serious, go into the stage five category, I'd weld up these holes, relocate them, all that hula. But right here, while it just touches a top, which ain't a lot to holler about, look at the width I'm going to gain. So, we're going to use 1406. I've already scribed the lines. And on a covered wagon deal, what you got to do is um, trench out the bottom. Since I ain't got a lot to move at the top, I'm going to be able to use the big cutter to pull all this in and take the casting flash off and then blend it. Okay, um, I just wanted to give you a heads up here and show you. Okay, what I'm talking about, there's probably about 100 to 120 thousandths of width. So I can pull them out on the width. Like I said, I wish I could have got more on the top because I had plenty. I had pad. But he lives in uh, Michigan or Minnesota. And if I had the headers here, I could make a better judgment call, but I don't. I know Hooker Super Comp seem to follow Felpro's uh, gasket print. So, anyway, this is what I'm going with. I just wanted to show you. So, the exhaust does get some work, but they flow really good, amazingly enough. So, I'm just going to go ahead and set this entrance up since the dimension-wise of a 1406 is 160. I'm going to have a hell of a good funnel and expansion rate coming out because it's 150 on the exhaust. So I doubt I have any problem here. When I get through with this, it'd be a prime candidate for about 150 shot of juice. But anyway, just thought I'd go ahead and show you. That's where I'm trenching. I've got that laid out. And I'll go ahead. I, like I said, I just went in the slide. Brought the two corners in, and then I'll switch to the big burr and clean all this up. All right, there we go.